Good afternoon everyone, God bless you all. And I'm just here to let you know and remind you that you need to prepare to meet your God. And your, our time's limited. And God has given each and every one of us a set time to live, a set time to discover Him, and he's, he's given you every minute of your life to discover who the real God is. And don't leave it till you die to find out. Because God's made a way. And I want to just share some, some scripture. I'll be reading from Matthew 16. And it's important that you... Uh, just listen to the scripture, be blessed by it, and understand that for you to really know who God is and who Jesus is, you personally, you have to go to God. You can read stories, you can, you can be in a church and under the teaching, and you can have the love and, and belief for God and for Jesus and for the prophets. but. A belief is one thing, but knowing Jesus personally, in a personal relationship, that's another thing. Your belief needs to go from a belief, you need to go from a belief and making that belief a reality. And the only way that's going to happen is for you to go to God yourself and ask Him. And He's waiting right now. I'll just read um, Matthew. 16, 13, down to uh, 17, and then I'll skip over to 21, 16, 21, and it says in Matthew, when Jesus came into the region of Casanaria Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So the first question Jesus had was, what do the people of the world say I am? Who do they think I am? And I'm asking you that question right now. Who do you think Jesus is? And who do you say he is? So they said, so they said some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. If you want to know who the true God is, you need to go to God himself. It wasn't revealed to Simon that Jesus was the Son of God through flesh or blood. It was revealed through the Holy Spirit and God himself. So I'm challenging you to look at yourself and I want you to challenge God personally because Jesus is asking you who do you say I am? Each and every person listening, you personally, each person, he's asking, who do you think I am and who do you say I am? And in 17, I'll read that again, Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father, that's God himself, who is in heaven. And then from there, Jesus went on, and I'll go down to 21. And he's Jesus, he's teaching his disciples, and he's predicting the circumstances and his death. And he said to them, and it says from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chiefs, priests and scribes, 
and be killed and be raised from the dead and be raised on the third day. And that's exactly what the scripture talks about. Now Jesus had a purpose. God gave him a job and he had a purpose. Sure he came, came to earth to free the captives, he healed the blind, he gave hearing to the, the people that were deaf, he raised people from the dead, but his job was to die on the cross, to shed his blood for you, to pay for your sins, so you could be united back to God. That was the purpose of Jesus. So Jesus is the Son of God. He's actually God who became flesh as human. He became a human being. And his job was to suffer, shed his blood, and to die for you. That was his purpose. And to prove that, I'll, I'll just go to, if I don't get blown away, the Philippines. Okay, I'm ready for oh. Philippians uh, 2, number 5. And it's, um, exact, the, uh, it's actually called the, hum the humbled and exalted Christ. And it's, it's 2, 5 to 11. And it, it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was in was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God. So here it's saying that Jesus Christ was equal to God. He is God. And then it says, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. So he's God in his spirit, being born in a human body and that person's name was Jesus. So he's God, he was born a human, he took our form, given the name Jesus and his sole job was to die on the cross to pay for your sins so you could be reunited to God. And it's a, it's a funny thing that wherever Jesus' name is, is, uh, is mentioned, he came to, to unite us and bring us back to God. But, you know, you'll walk, that in most people, everyone, you'll come to a fork in the, in, the, in the road and you have to decide, every person you I'm talking to, every person will have to make a decision. You either have to make Jesus your Lord and your Saviour or turn away and, and reject him. And that's where the division comes in. So you have parents divided with, with, with sons and daughters, uh, family friends are divided, all because of religious reasons and because of Jesus. But that's not the reason he came, because of his love, he died on the cross for you. Now I'll, I'll just finish reading that. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's truth there in the Bible. So regardless of what you've been taught, what your religion is teaching you, or your church is teaching you, you have to go to God and find out the truth. It's written here, but you have to receive it. And God has to show you. And my testimony has always been that I went to God, I was 24, I spoke to the sky, and I went to God and I said, if you're real, you show me, 
and I'll believe and follow you for the rest of my life. And instantly, that was a cry from my heart. I meant it, I was sincere, and God instantly touched me supernaturally. Like a lightning bolt, and it, his, his love and uh, energy just flowed right through me. I knew immediately it was God, it wasn't anything else. I'd never met, experienced anything like this. Touch my heart, touch my soul, and that changed me. I knew God was real, and I'm telling you, He is real. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is real. And the scripture says that my sheep hear my voice. And I speak to a lot of Christians, and I ask them, Have you, has Jesus spoken to you? And they'll say, no. And I'll say, do you believe Jesus can speak to you? And they'll, they're doubtful. They'll say, no. I'll say, do you believe in, in miracles? They'll say, no. And, but I'm telling you, the day I surrendered to Jesus, he spoke to me the way I'm speaking to you. He told me to bless people. And it's a relationship that you, you, you walk in every day. You communicate with God and with Jesus. You get revelation through the Holy Spirit. And I'm not here because of the church. I'm here because Jesus told me to. Now, if you're missing out on that, look in, into your heart and find out why. And I'll tell you the reason why. Even you could be a believer, but you haven't been empowered by the Holy Spirit. You haven't been touched supernaturally by God. God has to speak to you, and he'll touch you, and he's just yearning. He's as close as I am to you right now, as close as the breath that you're taking, and he's just waiting for you to open your heart. He wants to forgive you. Come to him in repentance, and ask Jesus into your heart. It was from that moment when you sincerely receive, you sincerely repent, and receive the Holy Spirit in power. It's from that moment on you a relation. You walk in a relation with God and you'll know, you'll feel his presence. I wake up in the morning and the first thing I feel is the presence of God. I meditate and talk to him and pray with him all day long. I get direction through the Holy Spirit. I'm no special than anybody else. I'm the same as you. But the one thing I did I looked at myself, I was brought up as a Christian, and I had the gospel in me, but I wanted to know if God was real. I just didn't want to walk in a belief anymore. I had a, a sincere yearning inside me, and I went to God, I spoke out, and I said, mate, if you're real, you have to show me. And he did. And I know he'll do the same for you. That's what you need. And the moment that happens to you, he fills you with his love, you feel his presence, and he draws you closer and closer to him. He shows you in, your, in his scripture as you, as you read your Bible, and he speaks to you. He protects you, and he blesses you. And every, every step that you take, he'll show you his power and his love and his protection over you. And the things that, that, that you've learned that you've been told from your parents or the priests or the church or whoever. Your decisions will change because what will happen, you'll, you'll get closer and closer to Jesus. And he gives you that, that unction to want to know him and want to know God. But if you don't have that unction in you, if you say you just believe, take one more step with your faith, come to God personally. Now I'm going to share a quick prayer for you to do that. And, and remember what, uh, what it said in, in Matthew, Matthew 16, when Jesus asked, who do you say I am? And, and, the script, and, and Jesus said, it wasn't by flesh or by blood, it was by my Father in heaven. So you need revelation directly from God himself. I can only tell you that he's real, and I can't change you, but the church didn't change me. It gave me a stepping stone. What did change me was a touch from God. And, I, and it, the greatest day of my life when I surrendered, and I found out the truth. So just say this prayer with us. 
ask Jesus in your heart, come to God in forgiveness and repentance, and make Jesus your Lord and your Saviour. Come to the truth. Here's the prayer. Say sincerely, I repent of my sin. Jesus died for me. He was crucified. He arose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. Now, if you die without making Jesus your Lord and your Saviour, once the door is closed, it's closed forever. You can knock on it, you can cry out, you can start repenting. You've been given a time and you need to come to Jesus before you die. Once the door is closed, you won't enter heaven. It'll be closed forever. So God bless you.